And I was the survivor. <laughs> and so they kept handing me more work to do. I was becoming increasingly stressed out. And I started having chest pains and all kinds of physical problems. And I was very, and I knew it was the stress <laughs> from the job. I knew it wasn't anything else. And I decided at one point that I just had to get away to the beach for a weekend. I was going to take my drum and my guitar and I was going to go to the beach. So, I, when I decide something, sometimes it happens very quickly. And within 20 minutes of me making that decision, I had looked up, I found a condo on Bradenton Beach and had already contacted the people, negotiated a price, and printed, signed, and refaxed them the contract for that weekend. <laughs> And this was on the Thursday, and I was going to leave Friday straight from work and head straight out to break the beach. And then I realized I should probably tell my husband that I was going to the beach. <laughs> for a so I picked up the phone and I said, honey, I just want to let you know I'm going to the beach this weekend. He said, I haven't been to the beach in so long. I love you. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, and you should pack a bag and have it ready so when I get off work Friday, I will come pick you up in the opposite direction. <laughs> and we will head out to the beach. So I picked him up Friday after work, we skedaddled, now I'm an hour behind, right? We get out to the condo, which is absolutely lovely. I get him situated into the condo. The first thing he does is turn on the HD TV to the sports channel really loud. And then the next thing he does is he gets sick. And he was so sick that night that I thought I was going to have to take him to the emergency room. And we sort of rode out the evening awake. So by the time 7 o'clock in the morning rolls around, Saturday morning, I looked at him. He looked at me. I said, you're going to live. But he says, I know. I need to go home. I said, you really do. So we packed him in the car. We're driving back to Tampa from Bradenton Beach. And I call Jesse and I say, Jesse, don't worry about feeding the cats because I'm bringing Luke back to the house. And Jesse says, what are you going to do when you drop Luke off? I said, I'm going back to the beach. Jesse said, I haven't been to the beach. <laughs> I said, so have a bag packed. <laughs> we go out to the beach. And when we get there, Jesse gets sick. <laughs> He gets a migraine from now. And I'm in full blown, on the outside I'm trying to be all nice, like I'm supposed to be. And on the inside I'm frickin' 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 I just wanted to write this weekend, and I'm gonna have a spiritual weekend, I wanted a spiritual retreat. <laughs> in full blown ego mode. Well, I actually got about 20 minutes on the beach that weekend. I didn't get a really long time, but I did get a little bit of time. And it was enough. I was standing on the beach, on the outside, very calm, picking up shells on the inside. <laughs> and I look up, and there's this woman down the beach. And you can't miss her because she's got dark skin, and she has this beautiful yellow sundress on. And she's just, she's smiling ear to ear. Her mouth is wide open. She's laughing. She's smiling. She's got some flashy kind of mirror thing in her hand. And she's got her hair all in braids. And I see her, and I'm thinking, that's kind of a crazy lady on the beach. <laughs> and she starts walking toward me. And I'm looking around, because there's all kinds of people on the beach, and nobody's paying any attention to her. And I'm trying to ignore her, but she's walking right toward me. And then she starts to run at me. And then she runs through me. And I'm not the kind of girl who sees things and hears things. So when it does happen, I do pay attention. I went home that weekend and Googled crazy woman in a yellow sundress. <laughs> <laughs> Oshun, who is an Orisha, Oshun was about to have her way with me. And not in the way that I expected. I'd always been kind of afraid of Orisha, and I still am. They're, they have way too much raw power for me. I, I like things that I can control a little bit better than that. But she stepped into my life to shake me up to do something very specific. I had been in survivor mode for years. For years longer than I needed to be in survivor mode. And I had gotten rid of anything that felt extraneous. In fact, I just, anything that felt extraneous. Lipstick, puh, don't need that. Eyeshadow, puh, don't need that. 
Fun? Who has time for fun? It was, it was terrible. I can't believe the person I've become. And Oshun stepped into my life to kind of bitch slap me a little bit. <laughs> tell me it was time to start enjoying life again. That I didn't have to be in survivor mode anymore. And that life to be lived was also to be enjoyed. And um, she gave me this. And there will be a part for you to sing along. And you'll know what to do. And you'll know when to do it. Taking you home with Mojo. I was a little bit bitter about working so hard No time for time off, no sun, moon, no stars My nose to that stone that keeps grinding away All was Monday, yeah, no time to play The job keeps roof up and food in the belly Without one to take My soul turned to jelly I couldn't remember what made me That was the year I lost my mojo on That was a year that I lost my mojo on That was a year that I lost my mojo on But I got it back Oh, I was feeling so bad for myself Party that wouldn't end well. My heart was dusty and I had a spray for 200 days. Blame it on the moon, blame it on the stars, blame it on those freaky tarot cards. You might as well blame on that fish in the sea. But I think it was me. That was the year. I got it back. 